let's talk about design patterns. So what exactly are design patterns? Well, design patterns are actually the best practices in a certain scenario to solve a particular problem. Usually you will see that a design pattern consists of the relationships between the classes and the objects. If you're working with design patterns or if you're implementing and identifying design patterns in your software development, it can speed up your development because those design patterns are already written and you're simply using them to create certain parts of your application. One very important thing about design patterns is that they are programming independent, meaning that you can use design patterns, a single pattern, into any kind of a language, any kind of a framework. So it's not like one design pattern can be used with C-sharp only, and one can be used with the Java language. They can be used with any language that you want. Design patterns are also flexible, reusable, and maintainable. So let's go ahead and now look at the MVVM design pattern and how it fits into the big picture. All right, so now that you have learned about the design patterns, let's go ahead and check out the MVVM design pattern, which is used throughout this course. So MVVM, these four letters, what do they mean? Well, MVVM basically means model, view, view, model. Now, in reality, when we are talking about the view model, that is one term, so you will never separate the last V out. You will kind of write it like this, MVVM, where the first one is model, the second one is view, and the last one is view model. Let's go ahead and check out a very simple scenario in which we have a view. This means this can be an iPhone screen, Android screen, something the users will see with their eyes. And we have a model. This can be a customer information, a shopping cart information, or some other information. Now we want to display the information, the model, those properties onto the view. So one way would be that model will simply go to the view and display it. But this is never really a good idea. And the reason behind that it's not a good idea is that the model class can contain a lot of logic, a lot of business rules that we don't really want to expose to the view. So how can we do it? Well, what we are going to do is we are going to introduce a view model. And whenever model needs to display something on the view or the view needs to talk to the model, they're going to use the view model as a middleman. So the model is going to talk to the view model and the view model will contain all the data, all the information that needs to be displayed onto the view. So the view model simply talk to the view and display the data. Now, if view needs to get something from itself and back to the model, the view is not really going to directly talk to the model. The view is going to talk to the view model. And the view model is going to eventually talk to the model. So this is the whole hierarchy when you are creating apps using the MVVM design pattern. Now that we understand MVVM design pattern, let's go ahead and look at the why. Why we need MVVM design pattern to create more maintainable apps. In the last lecture, we learned about the MVVM design pattern, but the question still remains that why do we have to use or why should we want to use the MVVM design pattern when we are creating our applications? In the last lecture, we talked about model exposing itself to the view, and that was something that you shouldn't do. But why? Why can we do that? What's wrong with that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at a very practical example. Let's say that you're working on a password reset screen, which will contain the username, new password, an old password or the confirmed password. And you also have a model which will have username, password, and confirmed password. Hmm, that kind of looks weird because I don't think your model should have confirmed password. The model has nothing to do with the confirmed password. This is not the information that you will eventually write to the database. So you will never have that. 
So if you are mapping your model directly to the view, you already have an issue. You have an additional field confirm password, additional property confirm password that doesn't really make a sense to create it in the model. Now, if we introduce a view model, it starts to make sense. So we will create a new model, a view model, which will be password reset view model. And the whole thing, the whole purpose of the password reset view model is to supply the data and get the data from the password reset screen. This means that username will get the data from the username text field. The new password will get the data from the new password text field. And same with the confirmed password. Now the great thing about this is that you can also add validation right inside your password reset view model so that when the data eventually reaches to the model and to the database and the service, it is already validated on the client side. So hopefully now you have a better grasp of why we use the MVVM design pattern. Now these are all simple examples. What about if we are using a networking call? How will our MVVM design pattern going to structure itself when we are doing a web API call and getting back the JSON. Let's go ahead and check it out in the next lecture. We will be doing a lot of web API fetch requests and posts in this particular course. So it's a good idea to understand that how will we structure our applications. Let's go ahead and assume that we do have a view and view is like, hey, I want all the customer information. So view is going to talk to a web service or a client. The web service will eventually go to the cloud and get some JSON data. Do you see a problem with this approach? Well, again, the view is directly talking to the web service. There is no abstraction. View is directly tied up to the web service. And that is never a good idea. So don't use that. Let's look at the correct approach. So you will have the view and view is saying, hey, I want all the customer information. The view is going to talk to the view model. The view model is going to talk to a different layer, which will be a web service or a client. And the web service or the client will eventually talk to some cloud service and get the data. This is the correct approach of when you are using the MVVM design pattern along with fetching and performing network calls. Now, keep in mind that we are not performing network calls right inside the view model. The view model is forwarding, it's asking the web service or the client layer to make those calls. Now, you will understand it more better when we are actually diving into the building actual apps. So now it's time to dive in and build actual apps. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video on MVVM design pattern. If you want to learn more about building Flutter apps using MVVM design pattern, then check out my new course, Flutter and Dart Build Apps Using MVVM Design Pattern, which is available on Udemy. Now this course is a nine plus hour course and it is very practical course because it goes through creating a lot of different apps. You will create the news application, which is going to be talking to a web API and displaying all the stuff. You will, dis you will create the place finder application, which is going to be connected to Google Maps and it's going to be connected to Google Places API, lots of fun. Then the city care application, where you will also integrate it with the photo library and ability to take the pictures from your camera and then the clone for Hacker News. So a lot of different applications we will be building in this particular course. So if you're interested in this course, the best way is to check out the link in the description, in the YouTube description, and click on the link. Now, if you click on the link, the great thing is that you will get the best deal. And to be really honest, I get to take a little bit of a larger share of the revenue, but you get the best deal no matter what. So check out the referral links in the YouTube description and please, please, please use the referral links. If you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoy my new course.